I've been working here for four years. I loved the job. My Uncle Pauly found it for me. I mean, as far as jobs go, it wasn't that bad. We were a small branch in New Jersey, but we were part of a large national network. My job was half data entry and half servicing the boss, but he was easy to get along with. He let me come in late and take long lunches when I needed it. And no, he didn't get anything from me for being me. I know I was a fox with my Italian ancestry, dark hair, huge breasts, and cute pot-belly ass. I was also short in stature, just over five feet, so there was a lot of me in the little bag. But I've been married for a little over a year now, and Vince, my husband, just wasn't inclined to spend time together. My boss had met Vince before and seemed to know which side of the bread to butter. The day started out quite normally. I arrived around 9.30 or so, and after the usual chit-chat with the other girls, I started entering accounts around 10 o'clock or so. We'd had a bit of a shake-up lately. Apparently, the main office was in California, and they'd been bought out by some Silicon Valley guys or something. I knew, of course, that a lot of the bleached blondes there had artificial breasts, but to have an entire valley named after them? It must be a guy thing, but I knew my babes were all natural, no silicone in them. Some guys were sent in from the main office and they shook things up a bit, letting some people go and moving others around. My boss seemed a little flighty, but personally, I didn't care. I had been married for a year and it was probably time to stop working and start having kids. My mom was expecting grandchildren, and my dad would have something to brag about. At the moment, he was earning three to five for doing nothing. So I wasn't too worried when around 11 o'clock, my boss told me I had to go to the office and meet with the vice president of partner relations. I don't know where they even get those names from. It wasn't like I was going to have a relationship with him. He was a creepy little man in his 50s with hair and a pudgy belly, and when I was ushered into his office, he had another one of those California idiots with him, some computer asshole who looked like a fat pimp. Where are all these surfer dudes with knobby bodies that were supposed to be in California? So they started by telling me that they found some irregularities in some accounts I was entering and that it looked like I was stealing money and sending it to an account in my name. I told them that was bullshit, that that was the case, and that I wasn't stealing. So the fat ball says, it looks like about $25,000 is missing and we have invoices with your stamp on them. They were entered at your workplace and went into an account with your name on it, which has since been emptied. I don't know anything about it. It must be fake. Someone is trying to set me up. I decided to let out a tear and use the little girl voice that saves me from many speeding tickets. But somehow they didn't believe me. Comb over lashed out like a bad cop when the fat man was just stating the facts. Maybe they thought they could scare me. But it wasn't like two office geeks from California were that scary to this Jersey girl. Tell you what, Angela, let us give you a few hours to think things over and figure out what happened. Come back around five o'clock, and then we'll think about what to do. But if you don't have good answers, we'll have to notify the local district attorney's office and insist they prosecute. The company takes a tough stance when it comes to theft, and this case will be out of our hands. Admittedly, I'm not big on this sort of thing. Clothing, yes. Shopping, yes. Makeup and hair, for sure. But embezzlement and district attorneys aren't my specialty, so I called my husband, Vince, and asked what to do. He asked a few questions and said it all sounded like bullshit and nothing to worry about, that it was some kind of setup. Even if the worst happens and the DA prosecutes, which is unlikely, we can plead guilty if I want to and I won't do time. A nice man like him offered to talk to them with me at 5 o'clock, but I said I'd handle it myself and we could meet for dinner at Angelo's around 7. This whole situation was stressing me out a bit, so I headed out for a manicure and pedicure. Nothing relieves stress like a little pampering. I know Vince said it was a setup, but my dad did three years for a setup, too. He didn't steal the trailer, he just let a friend park it in the yard overnight. So I got back to the office around 3 o'clock and twiddled my thumbs for a couple hours. I wasn't going to touch the computer again or enter invoices if I knew someone was fiddling with them. Some might think that since I'm pretty and have big breasts, I'm stupid. But Daddy didn't raise stupid girls. I know I can seem distracted sometimes, but half the time it was an act, just to help me get my way. You can learn a lot when people take you for granted and don't think you realize what's going on. Anyway, it was five o'clock and I was off again to meet with Rowan Fatball. 
They asked if I had an explanation, and I chatted for a while, letting a couple tears flow and stuff, and said I didn't understand, that I never stole anything and stuff, but they didn't seem to buy it. Then the fat balloon started talking about the real reason for all this mess. Angela, maybe we can help you. I mean, you seem like a nice kid and all. Maybe we can find a way to keep all this from coming out and avoid being prosecuted for it. So maybe the silly act and the tears worked after all. Of course we want you to do something for us in return. There was always a catch to that. I learned early on that no one does anything for others for free. What do you want me to do? Comb Ower walked over and locked the door, and I realized this was a bad thing. Two guys, a locked door. This was the kind of shit I hadn't seen since high school, when a few of my friends had been treated like this. Why don't you take off your clothes first, and let us see what sweet body you're hiding underneath? Are you fucking nuts? You think I'm going to get naked for you two slugs? My husband would fucking kill us. You want to see breasts? Go to a strip club? Angela, I don't think you understand your position. Either you play the way we want you to play or you're going to jail. How do you think a little girl like you is going to behave in jail? You'll be surrounded by lesbians the first night, and they'll be a lot rougher than we are. Besides, the guards will just eat up a tidbit like you. I looked at him like he had two heads or something. How could you be so stupid, even living in California? Do you think my husband would let something like that happen to me? Do you really think he would let someone touch me? Comb decided to join the conversation. He's a soldier, isn't he? Damn right, and he's one of the best. He'll make captain in time. I didn't think he'd make officer, but it doesn't matter. You think a soldier has influence in the state penitentiary? And how's that going to affect his career with his wife being arrested and all? Wouldn't you want to save him from that? All you have to do is get naked and show us your sweet little body, maybe hook up a couple times, and it will all go away. I know I'm from Jersey and they're from California, but I felt like we were like we were from two different planets. Why did the fact that I got caught have to hurt Vince, and like I was going to take my clothes off? I tried to act like a little girl, but they were starting to really annoy me. And when I lose my temper, even Vince has been known to pull away for a while. I've heard enough of that shit. I wouldn't disrespect Vince like that. If you two want sex, you can sleep with each other, but I'm not going near you. So you can just unlock the fucking door and stop all this shit now. If we unlock this door, you're going to jail. My next call will be to the district attorney's office and they'll pick you up tomorrow. You think hubby's gonna wait for you while you're in jail? Unless he divorces you while you're away, how do you know he's not having fun on the side right now? Of course, Vince is fooling me, because a man has to keep up appearances. It's not good for guys to think he's a douche and all that. But I wouldn't disrespect him by sleeping with him, much less you two slugs. I mean, really, that's what you do in California to get sex. Try to blackmail some dumb slut? I said that. I still couldn't figure out what these two were getting at. Something was wrong. And it wasn't about blackmail, but for some reason, I couldn't figure it out. You don't think arresting him is disrespectful to him. You have to do it to protect him. Do you think the army would promote a man whose wife is a convicted embezzler? The army? What the hell is the army? Then the Air Force or the Marines or wherever else he's serving. And then it hit me. They thought Vince was in the army. God, I laughed out loud at how stupid those two assholes could be. Vince isn't in the fucking army, assholes. This is New Jersey, for Christ's sake, not the fucking East. Vince is a soldier on DeMario's team. He works for my Uncle Paulie's family. He's a goddamn real man. I couldn't help it. When I got angry, I always started swearing. Paulie? Paulie Sprezzalotto. Big Paulie. My mother's older brother. You've never heard of Big Paulie Sprezzalotto? He runs this half of fucking Jersey. Who do you think pays for the fucking DA's campaign? God, you two are so stupid. Vince is going to cut your balls off when he finds out about this. I can't believe you two assholes tried to blackmail me. What a pair of fucking idiots. Combs rushed to unlock the door. Obviously, we've made some kind of mistake. I don't see the point in bringing your husband into this. You can just tell him it was a misunderstanding. You're free to go. Obviously, you two made a big fucking mistake. You think I'm going to keep this from Vince? No way. I'm going to tell Vince everything. 
You have to realize how disrespectful you've been to him, trying to blackmail his wife and everything, much less get in her pants. He needs to maintain his image. But answer this. Where's the $25,000? What $25,000? The $25,000 you two dumb bastards siphoned off and tried to pin on me. I know you put them somewhere. We got them in cash, small amounts, and they're in a safety deposit box. Maybe if I tell Vince tonight that you two are going to hand him $25,000 tomorrow in cash, he might be able to convince him to look the other way for once. Although I don't think... No, you sure as hell didn't think. You thought you were still in fucking California and I was just some dumb slut you could sleep with but couldn't do a damn thing about. So you better start thinking if you want to see California in one piece again. I'll have Vince send someone to get the money tomorrow afternoon, and you bitch better get it, and don't try to play smart with us with that DA bullshit. Now open the goddamn door and get out of my way. I'm meeting Vince for dinner. <laughs>